I'm going to be making two kosher Passover recipes and you can find these recipes. I'm going to talk them out. I'm also going to write them up, but you can find them on my Instagram page, Fran's Balance Kitchen. So both of those recipes are there. So the first recipe that I'm going to start with is my almond, um, my almond flour biscottis. So these, this recipe is great. You can make it all year round. And um, it's great for Passover. So I'm starting off with um, this almond flour. You can find it at any kosher supermarkets, kosher Passover. And I also, if you're ordering from Costco, we're going to Costco. I also bought um, kosher Passover almond flour from Costco. So I just have my almond flour. I'm going to measure one cup. So I love these recipes that I'm going to do because they're very versatile. You can really do whatever you want with them. And whatever you want. I'm just going to go get eggs. One second. Okay, so there's one cup of almond flour, then the sweetener that I'm using is coconut sugar. You can use um, cane sugar if you have, or you can use regular sugar. I just like to use coconut sugar because it's just a healthy alternative. So you could see um, this is kosher for Passover. So this brand, you can find it in any kosher supermarket. They all carry it. So I love this recipe also because there's not a lot of sugar in it. There's only a third of a cup. So it's really not that much at all. So I have it in my bowl. Now I'm gonna add a teaspoon of baking powder. And I'm gonna add, I don't, so first I'm gonna mix this. I don't have vanilla extract, but when I have it, I put in one teaspoon, it's optional. It's much better with, so I would say definitely add it. And then, so the only binder for this recipe is going to be eggs. So I have two eggs. I'm just going to take two eggs, put it in, and I'm going to start to mix this up. So you could see the mixture. So there's only almond flour, coconut sugar, vanilla extract, and eggs, and a little baking powder, one teaspoon. So this is the base of the biscotti recipe. So you guys can add whatever other ingredients you want. So you can add in, so I'll show you for example, you could add in any type of nuts, chocolate chips, white chocolate chips, really whatever you and your family enjoy. So personally, I love to do a nice, a nice mixture. A nice mixture of chocolate chips, walnuts, almonds, pecans, pistachios, so I love to do really a mixture of things. So I'm gonna add it into my pot. You guys can see it. I don't think I could flip. Oh, I can't flip the camera. Okay. So you guys could see what the mixture looks like. It looks like a dough. So I just put in all my nuts and my chocolate chips. I'm just gonna continue to incorporate all the ingredients together. And then, we're going to put it on a baking tray. I'm gonna show you how I place it on. And then we're gonna bake it in the oven on 350 for about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. And then just like a regular biscotti, we're going to slice it and then put it back in the oven so it could get nice and toasty. And I also love this recipe because once you kosher your kitchen for Passover, you can bake it and keep it in the freezer. And it tastes much better frozen, so I love to keep it frozen also. So I'm just gonna take my baking tray. I lined it with parchment paper. And my oven is preheated to 350. So I'm taking my mixture. 
So you can see it's like a good consistency. It really holds well together, if you guys can see. I'm just taking the whole thing. And then you want to make it into like a nice rectangle square because that is what is going to make it like a biscotti form. So you guys can see it here. It holds very nice together. You can also double this recipe. This recipe makes about like 15 biscotti. So it depends um, how many you want to make, but definitely you could double the recipe. It comes out great. Still the same. And like I said, you could really add any toppings that you want. So that's what I love about it. Sometimes I even like to add like cinnamon. And I like to add white chocolate chips. You could even add a little bit of cocoa powder if you want. So you guys can see I'm just making it into a nice rectangle. I'm just gonna push this in a little more. And I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna flip the camera and show you guys. On. So, so this is what you want it to look like. A nice rectangle, a little thick. You can see all the nuts and the seeds and the chocolate chips that are in here. It really makes it taste so good. So now we're just gonna pop this in the oven for about 20 minutes, like I said. So it could get nice and crispy. So put it in the oven. So while that is um, going in the oven, I'm gonna start with my second recipe. And that is my spaghetti squash pizza. So I love this recipe because it's great to make all year round. I make it all year round. And you can also make it, I like to make it with um, zucchini. You can also do it with zucchini and you could also do it with quinoa. Mm -hmm. So all those recipes are on my Instagram page, Brands Bounds Kitchen. So you can do it, but it's really the same exact um, recipe, just switching the base. So we're going to start off. So today I'm making spaghetti squash pizza. So I just have a bowl here. I have my spaghetti squash. So I had a whole spaghetti squash, one whole one. I sliced it in half. I baked it in the oven on 375 for about a half hour until it got nice and soft. See, like it's nice and soft and fully cooked on the inside. So I'm just going to get a fork. And now with spaghetti squash, it's like nice long spaghetti strands, like you can see. So all you wanna do is fluff it out, take a fork, and you really wanna just get all the squash out. And once you cook it fully, it's really, really simple and easy to just take out the spaghetti, the squash. So we're just gonna take this all out. And I also, I take the seeds, there are seeds in the middle of the spaghetti squash. I take out the seeds after it's fully baked, so it's much easier to take out than taking it out before you bake it. So don't worry about the seeds in the beginning. You'll just remove them before you do this next step. So I have, I'm doing one whole squash. So they come in different sizes. So the size will depend on how many eggs you need, but it's usually around two to four eggs. And I like to use egg whites only but if you want to use full eggs, you definitely can. So my spaghetti squash, this one is a little bit on the bigger side. You can see my big bowl and it's all up to them. So I'm probably gonna need like three egg whites. I just personally like to use egg whites better than whole eggs, but you guys can do what you want. So this is gonna be the pizza crust. So we're making spaghetti squash pizza. Um, so when it comes to the spices for the spaghetti squash, you can really do whatever spices that you want. 
vegetables. You can add oregano, you can add salt, pepper, um, onion salt, garlic salt, whatever you want. I could see somebody writing on the bottom about the recipes. Um, you can find them on my Instagram page, Franz Downs Kitchen, or you guys can, um, I'll write them up. So I'll get them to all of you after. So just bear with me. I'm gonna also say all the ingredients out loud if you wanna write it down. So I just have one whole spaghetti squash, fully cooked. I just put it in my bowl. So now we're gonna add the egg whites. Like I said, you guys can use whole eggs. I just personally like to use egg whites. So, like I said, depending on your spaghetti squash, you'll see how many eggs you need. I always say do less in the beginning. Like I just put three. So now I'm gonna mix it up. And if, if the mixture doesn't feel like there's enough eggs to bind it together, then you can always add more. You can always add more, but you can't take out. So always to, better to be safe. Start with less, mix it up. See if everything is coated and well combined. And then you can add more. So also another important tip is to make sure your spaghetti squash is fully cooled down before you do this step because you don't want the eggs to cook and get scrambled in. It's not going to be good. So this spaghetti squash was like a nice medium size. So I put in three egg whites and it's perfectly combined. I'm gonna flip the camera to show you guys. So you could see it's nice and combined. See how it's like nice and stuck together. And like I said, I do this with zucchini. I do this with zucchini. I also do this with quinoa. They're both on a um, page, but all I do is take, you can take grated zucchini, you can take spiralized zucchini and just mix it with egg whites, spices, and put it in the oven. Also um, with quinoa, I do fully cooked quinoa, quinoa that's already cooked, and I mix it with the eggs, and then I add spices and put it in the oven. That's the first step. So now that I have the egg mixed up, I'm just gonna add in salt. When it comes to the spices, I really, don't measure anything. I just eyeball it to do whatever you want, depending on your preference, your taste. These two recipes that I'm doing is also very personalized. You can really add in, take out whatever you want. The base is very neutral, very simple. So that's what I really love about these recipes. And they're great for Passover and they're really great for all year round. So I'm just gonna look at my pantry and see what spices I have. So you also don't need to put tons of spices. I know people don't buy so many spices for Passover and that's okay. You don't need to go crazy on the spices. It's just a good addition. So I love my, this onion salt from Trader Joe's. I put it on literally everything. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. I'm gonna continue to mix it all up. So I just put salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. And that's enough for me. You can add oregano, you can add basil, you can add parsley, anything. So now my oven is already preheated to 375. So that's gonna go, this is gonna go in the oven. So I'm just gonna flip the camera. So this is my baking tray that I use for the spaghetti squash. So I'm just gonna reuse it, it's fine. So let's see if I could do this one handed. So I'm gonna pour the whole mixture onto my baking tray and now you want to just spread it out you can make it into a rectangle you can make it into a square you can make mini pizzas you can make a full one you can make two small ones you could really do it however you want whatever you prefer minis are actually very cute because then you can personalize them and do like any topping you can make some vegan with vegan cheese you can make some with regular but i'm just going to show you guys how i make a whole one so I just have my mixture in the middle and I'm just gonna spread it out for it to be a nice size pizza. So you really wanna mimic just a pizza crust and see how it holds its shape really well because there's enough eggs. 
and overdoing the eggs isn't a good thing either. So you wanna just start small and then add. So I'm just gonna keep on spreading it out. I like to leave like a little bit thicker on the edges so it's like a crust. So it's nice like this. So again, all I did was one spaghetti squash, three egg whites and spices. And like I said, you guys could really do any, any spices. You could do it with zucchini. You could also do a quinoa. So this is done. So this is what it looks like if you wanted to make a whole pizza. So I'm just gonna pop this in the oven. And it's in the oven with the biscotti. You could see how it's cooking. It looks so good. Put this in on top and I'm gonna let this start to bake. So I already pre-made both recipes so you guys can see how it's done instead of waiting the whole time. But does anybody have any questions? You can unmute yourself and ask me or I can see if anybody, let's see. If anybody asked me any questions, oh, okay. When it comes to the zoodles, the zoodles, if they're gonna be frozen, if the zucchini noodles are going to be frozen, cook them first and then squeeze out the water. But I just do, I just put in um, raw zucchini, either spiralized or grated and mix it with eggs. And that doesn't have to be pre-cooked or anything. I keep it raw and it cooks in the oven. Um, somebody asked me how long the spaghetti squash is gonna be in the oven for. About 35 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven. You want it to be basically fully cooked because once you put on like the pizza toppings, like you put on sauce and cheese, then um, you're just gonna let the sauce and cheese cook. You don't want the, the crust to cook any longer, but you want it to fully cook. Um, so it needs about 35 to 40 minutes. Let's see. Um, can, you can you use a substitute for eggs? Yes, you can. You can use um, flax eggs if you want. I just don't think it's kosher for Passover, but you could definitely use flax eggs. Um, does quinoa take less eggs? It really depends on the on how much quinoa you put. So if you're putting about like a cup of quinoa, it's probably just gonna need like two egg whites. So it really just depends on if all the quinoa is coated in the egg whites so that it could be binded nicely together. So it really depends on how much you use. And that goes for the zucchini and the spaghetti squash as well. Let's see. For the biscotti, how much vanilla would you use if you had it? So the, the vanilla extract, so I'm gonna reread the recipe, but the vanilla extract is one teaspoon. So the recipe for the biscotti is one cup of almond flour, a third cup of coconut sugar, or it can be any sugar that you have. I just personally like to use coconut sugar because it's a healthier alternative. Then I use two eggs, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then I add in a quarter cup of pistachios, a quarter cup of chocolate chips, some cranberries, some apricots. You can really add whatever toppings you want. Um, somebody just asked me, can you make the crust and then freeze it? Yes, yes, you can. Make the crust, fully bake it, and then freeze it. So definitely you can do that. I was gonna say to do that, thank you for reminding me. It's definitely a great, um, it's definitely a great alternative. So you make it, have it in your freezer and you can um, make it in advance and just take it out before using it. I would put it in the oven again, 
just to make sure like to heat it up, you know, don't let it really thaw out. Just put it straight in the oven. Can you do this chopped cauliflower? Can you use it? Yes. You can use cauliflower if you want. I would just um, use cauliflower rice. So just if you don't buy cauliflower rice, you, like raw cauliflower rice, um, then you can just put in a food processor and rice it yourself and then add the eggs and spices that you want. Really simple. Um, anybody have any other questions before I get back to the um, recipes that are in the oven? Okay, so you guys could keep on asking. I could see in the question box. Okay, so I'm gonna continue. So I already baked my, first let me check on the biscotti. Okay, it looks really good. I'm gonna show you guys. It needs a couple of more minutes. We flip it, see? It rolls a little bit, it looks nice and delicious. It probably needs another eight minutes. So I'm gonna start with the, the spaghetti squash crust because I already pre-baked this before because it needs like 40 minutes. So this is what it looks like when it's fully baked. So this one's a bit larger, it was just a bigger spaghetti squash, but you can see the crust, how it's fully baked. It looks great. I tried a piece on the side, it's really good. So now your options are really anything that you want. You can do sauce, you can do cheese, you can do nutritional yeast, you could do a vegan cheese, you can do tomato sauce and vegetables only. You really, you could do pesto, you could do really anything that you want, very personalized. Um, and just if you're freezing it, I would freeze the crust and not freeze it with, um, I would not freeze it with toppings, just would be messy. So this is my favorite tomato sauce and it is kosher Passover. So that's a plus. So I like to also put the toppings on and put it in the oven right before I'm serving it. So it's just like nice and fresh. So I'm just gonna take my sauce, put a nice amount, you guys could see, and I'm just spreading it all over. So I even do like half and half. So like half vegan, half um, regular, because everybody likes something different. I personally like to put nutritional yeast. And then you can add like grilled vegetables, cherry tomatoes, mushrooms, zucchinis on top, fresh basil if you have really anything. That's why I love these recipes. You can really customize it and personalize it. So this is what it looks like with the sauce. So I'm just going to get my cheese and nutritional yeast. So nutritional yeast is not culture Passover, but since it's before Passover, I'm just going to do half of it now. And like I said, you can make this throughout the year. I make it all the time. So you can do whatever you want. So I just have cheese. I like to use natural and kosher. And it's kosher Passover. Great cheese, always fresh and delicious. So I'm just gonna put half cheese and half nutritional yeast. And I, I love to use spaghetti squash because it's like a little sweet. So it just like tastes delicious with the cheese and the sauce. And it's light, you know? So when you eat it, you don't feel heavy after. You just feel like good and it's filling and satisfying. I really love this recipe so much. So I just have my nutritional yeast. I like to get it from Trader Joe's. I'm just gonna sprinkle it all over the pizza. I'm gonna flip the camera so you guys could see what it looks like. Hold on. So look how good this looks. So this is the nutritional yeast. It just like melts into the sauce, but it's on. And then this is the cheese side and a nice crust. 
It's so good, guys. You have to all try this recipe. It's delicious. So I'm just going to get this back in the oven. So it needs about 10 minutes on 375 just until the cheese melts. It gets nice and bubbly. So I'm going to take out the biscotti. It looks like it's ready. It looks really good, guys. Hold on. So this is the biscotti. Nice and firm. You can see that it's nice in color. So we're just gonna let this cool down for about 10 minutes until we slice it. And then we put it back in the oven like a traditional biscotti. So while this cools down, I'm just gonna see any questions. Yeah, so one teaspoon of baking powder that I use. I made it before without baking powder. You, you don't have to add it. I just like to add the baking powder because it makes it rise and just like makes it a little bit better. Um, okay. So let me. Oven. I'm just going to wait another minute until it cools down. If you guys can see, it's nice and the thickness. So you can really do it um, however, um, whatever size you want it. You can make it into a nice, like, thin log. You can make it wider. You can even make these into, like, a cookie. It's really whatever. Um, you guys prefer and like I said you can add any toppings on the inside whatever you want even like it's nice to drizzle chocolate on it after it's done before you're serving add a little bit of coconut flakes sea salt really you could do so many things with these recipes the crust doesn't fall apart when you cut it no the crust the crust doesn't fall apart um that's what I love if you put a nice amount of eggs and you cook the crust for a long enough time it really holds its shape, you know? Um, maybe it gets a little bit messy, but it's still delicious and it's worth it. It's really good. I would say um, if you wanted it to be like more firm, you can add flour if you want. I just personally think it really doesn't need it. It's so good as is. How, hold on, let me just look. How long do you bake after you put the topping? So I bake the crust for about um, 10 minutes until like the cheese melts. Looks great. Are you posting this recipe? Yes. I'm going to post the recipe. I'm going to get it to you guys. And if you guys want to also see, um, the recipe is posted on my Instagram page, Franz Downs Kitchen. Everything is written on there. Um, so let me show you guys the biscotti. So... Now I'm just, look how good this looks. You see the chocolate chips, the nuts, the cranberries. So I'm just starting to slice it. You could do it whatever size you want. I just think the biscottis come out best when they're just thinner. So I'm just gonna continue to slice it this thin. And then we're gonna lay them flat. I'll show you guys like this. And we're gonna put them back in the oven. So I'm just gonna flip the camera again. You guys, oh, okay, now you guys can see. And I'm just gonna continue to slice these. So you wanna make sure like you leave these in the oven for about 20 minutes so they're really firm so you could cut them well. Because if they're under baked, then you're not gonna be able to slice them good and it's just gonna be messy, so. You want them to be almost fully baked. And you can see, look at all these toppings on the inside. It's really, it's a, it's a great recipe, you guys, for Passover and all year round. And if you're making these in advance, like I said, they stay great in the freezer. And they also stay good in an airtight container, but I prefer leaving all my desserts in the freezer always before I um, serve them, so. I'm just gonna go back to my baking sheet. 
And like I said, when we're putting them back in the oven now, we're gonna put them flat so they get nice and crispy. So, let me see if you guys can see look how good they look. And they really look like real biscotti and they really taste so good. Let's turn it And also use the same baking sheet. Don't like use a new one. Don't make a bigger mess than you have to. So I'm just going to flip these all on one side and then they'll get nice and crispy. So let me just show you guys again how they look because they really look so good and they taste amazing. And they're not too sweet and they're not dense. They're just like really just a yummy dessert to have in the morning with coffee, have after dinner, have as an afternoon snack. It's really so good. Okay, so 375 back in the oven. So they get nice and crispy. So let me look. Okay, so I baked these already. So this is how they come out, the final product. Look how good these look. They are so delicious. See all the chocolate chips and the nuts. And like it's on a beautiful serving platter. So this is just how I would serve it um, on a holiday. It's so nice to put out, give to your guests. So you can also like drizzle chocolate on top of these if you wanna get extra fancy and you could also sprinkle some sea salt you could sprinkle coconut flakes really anything that you want so i love this recipe they come out so pretty and nice and really everybody loves these and you can really put in any toppings that you want so everybody can like them and it's really great um somebody just asked me how long i put the biscotti back in to get crispy so it depends on your oven but really 10 to 15 minutes you don't want them to burn, you just want them to get a nice crispy exterior like you would do with a regular biscotti. So they're nice and crispy. Okay, so that's the biscotti recipe. If you guys want to um, check out my Instagram page, you could see I have the recipe fully written down. I'm gonna repost it again so you guys can all see. So I'm just gonna take out the spaghetti squash pizza. Do I flip them? I don't flip them. You can flip them if you want for the biscotti. I just see that they get nice and crispy on both sides anyways, like without flipping them. So you could just leave it on one side. So the pizza, I think this is my favorite recipe. I'm back to the show you guys, hold on. So this is the pizza, how it comes out. The cheese is nice and bubbly. And this is the vegan side. It smells delicious. It really is so yummy. Um, at the end, you can drizzle a little olive oil if you want. I personally like to put hot pepper flakes on top. Let me get hot pepper flakes. You could put oregano. Put any pizza toppings that you want. Super simple, delicious piss or a recipe. So those are the two recipes fully done. Does anybody have any questions? Let's see. Anybody has any questions for both the recipes? All I want is pizza. <laughs> Thank you. It's really an easy recipe. It's so simple. You saw me make it. It's really quick. You can freeze it. And I, yeah, so my biscotti are still in and everything. If anybody wants to unmute themselves and ask a question, let me know if you have any questions about the recipes. So this is how the pizza comes out. It's so good. And you can see like the crust holds its form. 
you just don't want to overdo it with the toppings or else the crust will fall apart but it's still so delicious it really is so does anybody have any questions I hear you so you can hear me hi hi i want to know the recipe for the biscotti please okay so it's one cup of almond flour okay a third cup of coconut sugar okay two eggs two eggs okay one teaspoon of vanilla extract one teaspoon vanilla okay and then i do a quarter cup of pistachios cup of pistachios okay can we can put any other nuts no Yes, you can do any nuts you want. So a quarter cup of nuts, a quarter cup of chocolate chips. You can add in apricots if you want, cranberries. Any really, oil? anything you want. No oil? No oil. This recipe no, has no oil. It's one cup of almond flour, a third cup of coconut sugar, two eggs and a teaspoon of vanilla and some pistachios. Yes. Okay, great. Yes, great. Super simple, easy recipe. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Enjoy. Would I use the same amount of sugar if not using coconut sugar? Yes. So, any sugar you can use, like organic cane sugar, you can add um, regular sugar. Um, I prefer, obviously, coconut sugar because it's like one of the healthier sugars. You can also add deet sugar. You just don't know if it's kosher Passover, but coconut sugar is kosher Passover. So I like to use it, this brand right here. You can find it in any kosher supermarket. And um, yes, use the same amount, a third cup. Does anybody have any other questions? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, the pizza dough recipe. Okay. okay. So the pizza dough recipe is one whole spaghetti squash. One whole spaghetti squash, okay. And then it depends, but it could be like three to four egg whites. Three depending to on four egg whites, okay. Depending on how big the spaghetti squash is. Okay. And then you're going to put um, salt, pepper, and spices. Salt, pepper. Okay. And spices. Do you put yeah. any garlic or no? You can put garlic powder, onion powder. Okay. okay. Whatever spices that you whatever want. you want. Okay. And then the topping is sauce and cheese. Yes. Okay. Great. Great, thank you so, so, so yes. much. You're welcome. Okay, you, you bake the spaghetti squash first, right? You bake it and yes. then you... Yeah, so spaghetti. fully okay. bake the spaghetti squash first mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. um, add the sauce and the cheese at the end and then, and then just bake it until it gets nice and melted. Thank you, thank you so, so much. Enjoy. Thank Enjoy. you. Oh, wow. Yes, so you guys could see how this looks. It comes out delicious. Why did you leave some without cheese? Because uh, I did half um, with like vegan cheese with nutritional ah, okay. cheese. But you okay. can do you can do any toppings you want. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions from the recipes? Um, so I think all the recipes um, were just easy recipes. You can check out my Instagram page and you could see um, the um, recipe for the zucchini squash pizza and also the um, quinoa crust pizza, both both your Passover, have the exact recipe. But like I said, it's the same method for the spaghetti squash. So I'm going to post them all on my Instagram page so you guys have them. But thank you guys for tuning in and getting all these recipes for Passover. 
I hope you guys can make them this Passover, God willing, and you enjoy them with your family. Thank you guys.